One of my most frequently asked questions is, how do I add a bit of fun to my town hall? Or do you know any good icebreakers for my webinar? And yes, whilst there are third party solutions like Kahoot, Microsoft Teams has never offered a native application until now. So introducing Games for Work, a free Microsoft Teams app you can add to your meetings, which provides a whole bunch of interactive games for your meeting attendees. In this video, we're going to see how to install the app into a meeting and how the four games actually work. And there's some FAQs at the end, which you'll want to stick around for. So how do we go about adding Games for Work into a meeting? And just to keep you on your toes, there are a few ways. So let's go look at the Teams app market and do a search for Games for Work. And there it is. If we click on the add app to meeting button, we can do exactly that on the following screen. So using this drop down menu, we can see the meetings we've already organized and you can store the app into. This gives us a hint about how the app has to be used. It's not installed to Teams as a whole, but has to be installed to each and every meeting you want to use it in. This, in my opinion, is the clunkiest way to use the app and how you're not probably going to use it yourselves. So let's take a look at how you can add it to a meeting on the fly and also how you can pre-add it to a meeting. This is example one, adding the app on the fly. So I'm in an existing meeting. Let's say it's a one-to-one -one with Alex and we want to play a game while we chat. All I need to do is head to the meeting bar at the top of the screen and click on the add app icon. We can do a quick search for games for work and here it is. Then click on the icon and on the following screen, just click save. And there we go. The games for work app has been added to this meeting. We can now see it in the meeting bar up here and this side panel has also appeared and the games are ready to play. But let's pause at this point before we start to look at the games in detail. I wanna roll back a little bit and look at scenario number two and how I think trainers, town hall organizers and teachers are going to use this and add the app to the meeting as they're setting up that meeting. Let's head back to my team's calendar and pick a meeting slot. We'll give it a name like monthly town hall this is the sort of meeting where we want to add a bit of fun and interactivity. And I'll add in a few colleagues for this demo. Now I can't add the app in yet. I must first send the invitation. So I'll click on the send button. And now we have to come back into our invite and then we can add the Games for Work app. I'll click on the add app icon. And in the pop-up window, we can do a search for Games for Work. I'll click on the icon and then on the following screen, we'll just click save. And now the app has been added to our meeting. So let's join that meeting and see how it works. Up here in our meeting bar, we can see the Games for Work app has been added. So at this point, the experience becomes exactly the same as when we added the app in the previous example, you know, on the fly example. So now we're all caught up and essentially these two meetings are now the same. So once again, we'll click on the app and the side panel loads. To share a game with all the meeting attendees, I need to click on the share full screen button. So this loads the game onto the meeting stage. And then notice over here, the app is now telling me we can close this side panel. So let's go ahead and do that by clicking on the X. Let's start with Solitaire and see what happens. Once the meeting game loads onto the meeting stage, we just wait for colleagues to join the game. And here we go. We can see that Alex has joined the game. Now I'm going to go into focus and content mode just so we can see the meeting stage a little bit better for this demo. The screen we're now seeing is called the lobby. Everyone on the call sees this exact same screen on their side, but only I see the option to start the game as I'm the meeting host. In each of the lobbies, you can see the following common elements. You can mute the game sounds for yourself. This might be a good idea if you're using the laptop microphone or you're the one running the call. We also see the options button. Now each game in the app will have a different set of options behind this button, which makes creating a video quite hard and quite long. So I'll leave it to you to explore that. Each is quite self-explanatory when you click into them, but let's head back to the lobby and we can see the instructions on how to play each game are kept roughly round about here in each of the lobbies. You'll also find the game instructions in each of the options menus. I think we all know how Solitaire works, but let's take a quick look at it. So Solitaire has five card games to choose from. Klondike is the classic one you remember from Windows 95. 
We can choose a theme. So this is just a personal setting. Only you see that theme. And no, and no up to eight players can join in. So this game is better suited for smaller meetings or breakout rooms. However, up to 250 attendees can watch the game. So as the host, I start the game. We get a countdown. And then we're off. So all the players get to see the same cards and it's first to complete their deck wins. There's not much else to it. Now if we want to play a different game, we can head up here to the waffle menu or click on the Games for Work app again in the meeting bar. Let's try Minesweeper. And when we click on it, we get a warning that we have another game in progress. And do we want to play this game full screen instead? Yes, we do. So if we click continue, it kicks all players out of any of the games you have running and we'll start this new game for them. With Minesweeper, the lobby is very much the same. Again, you have mute, you have game options, and you have how to play instructions. Let's start the game. Once the game starts, it's just like the classic Minesweeper you all know and love. However, this time you're playing with everyone on the call, so communication is key. Everyone gets free lives. Once their lives are up, they just become a spectator. And at the end of the game, the scoreboard will show you the percentage contribution of each player. Let's take a look at Wordament. And notice some extra options down here specific to this game. So you can set a longer timer, and this is the bit I love. You can play in Spanish, English, French, and Italian. So this is great for language teachers. Let's start the game. And as you can see, this is basically Boggle. You have a set time to find as many words as possible by dragging your mouse over the letters. And the winner is the person with the highest score. Last but not least is the Icebreaker game. So this has four sub games of its own inside of it all designed to spark discussions and all contain A or B type questions. So let's play Would You Rather. You're presented with a question and you simply click on the answer you want. And once everyone has voted, you can move on to the next question or change to one of the other sub games. Occasionally the game will help drive further discussions with nudges such as, can you give an example? So I think this is the game that will get used the most. It's perfect for large town halls and should generate some laughs. As the host, you might have to be the one encouraging people to speak though, and it goes on forever until you end the game. No timer on this one. So that's the tour of the games finished and how to add the app to your meetings. Now let's look at some FAQs I know you're bound to ask. Does Games for Work work in breakout rooms? So yes, it does. The app can be added on the fly to breakout rooms by any of the participants. Does it work on the web browser version of Teams? So at this point in time, it doesn't. You need the full desktop client of Teams. Does it work on the Teams mobile apps? Yes, absolutely it does, and it's brilliant. Each game works really well with touch interface. This makes games like Icebreaker perfect for in-person meetings or webinars. Everyone can grab their phones or tablets and start to play. Can externals play? Yes, they can, but they must have the desktop client. So if their company isn't a Teams user, you might want to give them a heads up. I'd love to hear about some of the scenarios you might use this for. And don't forget, I'm on your socials such as Instagram, and we have a thriving community of 40,000 of us on TikTok where we share daily tips and quick videos. Link is in the description.